So continue with our full study. We come to number 18. As we look to the word fool in the Bible, and that's one thing the Bible does not want us to be, is to be fool. So we're going to go through this lengthy study. And Job chapter 30, verse 8 is the 18th place for fool. And we've seen so far that we may not think we are fools, and yet the Bible says in some of our actions we are foolish. And fool is a sin. It needs to be confessed. It needs to be get right. And we need to realize that Matthew says, Every idle word we shall give an account thereof. And when, for a study of Christians, when we appear before the judgment seat of Christ, our thoughts, our words, what we hear, what we see, what we touch, where we go is going to be judged. And one of the things that's going to be judged is being a fool. In Job 30, verse 8, the Bible says, They were children of fools, yea, children of base men. They were viler than the earth. And, well, what we see to, to the fact is, we may be fools because our parents were foolish. We admit, may have picked up on their ways. We usually do more to the parents' wrongdoings than we do to their right doings. Every parent wants their child to do right. A proper parent doesn't want their child to do wrong, and yet the child picks up more wrongness than they do the rightness. And it's not only by birth. I'm not saying a man is born foolish, but it's by imitation of what he saw through life. And many of the foolish things that we do or are doing is because our parents did it. And being grown up years and years and years, it may come to be second nature. In the next place we find, we jump over to Psalms 5. Psalms 5. Psalms 5, 5. And we're going word by word, place by place, chapter and verse on this study. And in Psalms 5, 5, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. And thy sight would be God. Thou, God, hatest all workers of iniquity. So, There will be no fools, there will be no foolishness in the eternal before God and His throne. Foolishness will not be allowed in the gates of New Jerusalem. And yet foolishness abounds in the world today. When it comes to the great white throne judgment for the lost man, if his name is not found in the Lamb's Book of Life, there will be no foolishness there, though acts of foolishness will be judged. There will be no foolishness before God. God is holy. God is right. And we need to realize when we be foolish, when we play the fool, it is not in the realm of God to do it. It is not in his presence. And we need that foolishness. We need to, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. And one of the sins that we must acknowledge to God to be cleansed and washed is foolishness. For it will not be for the throne of God. Psalms 14.1. You know, we think of that court jester. We think of a bumbling idiot. We think of somebody who has not their sense. 
when we talk about the word fool. And yet, here we are, 19 verses. I have found myself to be a fool. I have actually, as we do these studies, I have pled the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse me of my foolishness and being the fool. When I first started this lesson, I just thought, you know, never had an idea that it would be light in my own light. And I thought it'd be more for others to hear too and others. If I do it, and I love the Lord, and I love the Bible and study, I would assume not all the fools we're talking about, but somewhere in our Christian life, as much as we love the Lord, there is a fool. There is foolishness in our lives. In Psalms chapter 14, verse 1, we read, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. So, an atheist is a fool. A man that proclaims, I don't believe God, there is no God, is a fool. And very hard to find a Christian that would match this one here. And in the realm of saying there is no God, you would have to say religion is a fool. Because in the realms of religion, when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And when Thomas says, my Lord, my God. And Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And multiple places in the Gospels and in the writings of Paul. Jesus is God and God is Jesus. And when you deny the God of the Bible, Jesus Christ, and his gospel, and you have replaced it with another Jesus that Paul says that there is another Jesus. In the realm of, I have a Jesus that doesn't match the Bible, whatever that Jesus is, you are saying there is no God. And you are relying on a small G-O-D or possibly small G-O-D-S. And in that realm of religion or another Jesus, you are saying in your heart there is no God because I've got another God. And you're a fool. I'll tell you, a fool would believe in a Jesus that came to North America. A fool would believe that God had revealed by golden plates and, and glasses. A fool would regard as far as an angel coming and visiting a prophet. Though Acts chapter said, said that angel to Cornelius, go get a Christian and have him to witness to you. A fool would absolutely be somebody who would think that hocus pocus and I can eat. And drink the literal body and blood of Jesus. A fool would say, if, if I cross my legs and get my mind out of my body, or if I worship animals, if I save animals, if I do something that is contrary to Scripture for salvation, and in your heart of your religion, of your science, of your education, of your pride, you are saying there is no God. And you are a fool. You have forsaken the God of the Bible and the word of God through the Bible for something else that is not God. And that is a fool. Because when we read chapter 14, verse 1, it says the fool has said in his heart, and right away there is no God. We think atheism. Though there could be somebody in a religion that promotes and, and says, I am a Christ, I am of Jesus, I am a Christian, and they very well are not on the biblical foundation of Jesus Christ. They're a fool. They are corrupt. 
A man that has believed on Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, suffered and died, was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. He is not corrupt. He is not. The flesh may sin, but he has been circumcised from that flesh, his, his soul. He does not sin, for he's a child of God. There is no corruptness in a child of God by Jesus Christ. And then <coughs> somebody comes along with another Jesus. Somebody comes along with another means of salvation. That's corrupt, and that won't stand before God. You'll stand at the great white throne judgment. Your name will be checked in the book. If it's not in the book, you'll be cast off in the lake of fire that burneth forever. That's corrupt. When John the Baptist says that he that has not the Son shall not see light, but the wrath of God abiding upon him, you don't have God. And you're a fool. You're a fool. And have done abominable works. And there's all kinds of religious and, and all kinds of try to make God satisfied with works. When the Bible says not of works, at least any man boasts. So a man that says I'm going by heaven by what I have done, what I am doing is a fool. And saying there is no God. Because if he were to promote, if he were to say there's a God, he would do that which is of God. And today that would be through the blood of Jesus Christ. And many religions are not bloody. Some are watery. Some are worky. Some are other gods. And that's a fool. So atheism and religion would be foolish. Would be fools. Psalm 38, 5. Psalm 38, 5. And with the realm that we just spoke about in, in chapter 14, I mean, that's not a Christian, that fool. That's a man who's not saved. He's a fool. We are wise and righteous by the wisdom and by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Many a man who thinks that he's right with God and is not right with God classifies as a fool. And yet for us Christians, isn't it? We think we're right with God. We think we're doing right with God. We think we're pleasing God. And when we find out we're not, isn't that not foolish? So Psalms 38, verse 5. My wounds stink and are corrupt because of my foolishness. Oh, look at that. That's the second time corrupt has shown up. Foolishness causes wounds to worsen or a disease. Foolishness is sin. Sin causes anguish, wounds. And Romans 6.23, death. The more we are fools, saved or lost, and do not deal with our foolishness. Do not confess our foolishness. We become even more stinking. And wounded and diseased in the eyes of God. Until we're judged. As far as Christians, the judgment seat of Christ. Listen, the more we sin, the more vile we get with our sins. Without co with confession, without pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. We only get vile. We only get dirtier and filthier. It's a healthy thing. It is a clean thing for 1 John 1, 9 that we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to cleanse us of our sins. And with that cleansing, we're able to treat the wounds that stink. We remove the infection of sins. And one of those infections that run through us is being a fool and doing the foolish activities that we do. It is not right. It is not healthy to be a fool. It makes us stink. And God the heaven, God our Savior, God of Almighty, says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And foolishness can make us vile. Foolishness can make us stink before the holy God. Confess it. Get it right. Psalm 39.8. Psalm 39, 8. 
Deliver me from all my transgression. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. Now we, now we reverse. Here the writer says, Lord, remove my transgression. And that can only be done today by the blood of Jesus Christ. And if we are not removed, if we don't confess our sin, if we do not apply the blood of Jesus Christ, what does the verse say? Make me not the reproach of the foolish. Now the foolish here is a man standing off. It is not me. It's a man standing off looking at me saying, Aha, uh -huh, he says he's a Christian, but look what he does. Oh, yeah, he professes to go to church. He professes to be a Bible reader. He professes, but look what he's doing now. So not only we are to seek God to remove our transgression, we are to seek to remove, get rid of those sins that we do. For the people on the outside that are looking at us, and there are people looking at us all around. When we profess to be Christian, Everybody around you, whether you know it or not, because now you know they're watching you. I had one day when I was working as a driver for the newspaper company, we're at the loading docks, and there was all kinds of trouble goes on at the loading docks, and this is one of those nights just, you know, you just wish you'd, <laughs> you wish you overslept the day, and you wish the day never started, and, and there was just all kinds of trouble, and, and I'm right there I was by the one of the trucks or something. I just happened to just yell out something. I said, I said, this sucks. And my boss turned to me and goes, What did you say? I said, What? You as and this is practically the words he said, you as a Christian said that? I said, I'm like, oh my oh uh oh, I crossed. <laughs> I said something I wasn't, oh man, Lord God, forgive me. And and I said, What? He goes, You said it sucks. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, well, I mean, but to him, for somebody who who's a Christian and lives the Christian, witnessing the people, and has a sound saying, the word suck coming out of my mouth, to them it was vile. And here's a foolish man who will not believe on Jesus Christ, looking at me saying, what's it say? Reproach of the foolish. And to them, you know, that's true. Maybe suck should not be a word in my vocabulary, though I say it three times already. To him, it was. And to him, when he looks at me, he says, you know what? That's something I should say. I'm talking about my boss. It shouldn't be something you say. And we got to realize as Christians, we do things that offend people, not because of who we are, because of what they look to us to be. The world knows what the true Christian is supposed to be like. And there are times that, oh, that reproach from them. There have been a few times in my life I have been reproached by an unsaved person. That's a big jab. But that's where that foolish man has become wise. I should have been the fool. Chapter, where are we now? Chapter 49, verse 10, Psalms. Chapter 49, verse 10. We're in a world of fools. Let's just face it. Saved or lost. The lost, because they will not believe on God, they say there's something else. Whatever it is. Or nothing else. That's foolish. And then there are Christians that things we do. If not to the world like what we just saw, but to God, in the eyes of God. You just imagine the Holy God say, oh, what did you do that for, you fool? And we are. I am. 49.10 For he seeth that wise men die, okay, likewise the fool, and the brutish person perish and leave their wealth to others. So what is this? Are you wise? Are you 
foolish? You brutish? Are you animal-like? Are you high on top of the ladder? You down the bottom of the ladder? You a CEO? You, you a prisoner in jail? Are you a homeless person? We all die. And with Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. And for the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if there's one thing that happens to a foolish person and to a wise person, if it happens to a Christian, if it happens to a lost man, death is coming. Death is more sure than taxes. But we just don't know when it's going to happen. Death may knock on the door any second, any minute. Any hour, any day, any week, any month, any year. But it's coming. And the, the common cure of man that we have is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and to be saved. And the common core of all man, whether you're white, black, or yellow, male or female, is we are sinners. And our sins will cause us to die. And if you're rich or you're poor, you're not going to stop it. When God has and will take our last breath, you can have all the money in the world. When God says it's up, you're going. You will pass on. You will be buried and wake up in hell, Luke 16, or you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Either or. But death will happen. You could be the greatest medical doctor and you could be not only the greatest medical doctor, but you can handle all medical illnesses of the body, of anybody. From head to toe. From as far as your, your, your hands go, from left to right. You might be able to work on every body part of the body. But if it's your time to go, your skills, your technology will not and cannot save your soul. Cannot prevent you from death. As to the wise, to the fool, we are in the same realm of death is coming. Now the only way you can escape death, and it's possible but we don't know when, is for a, a born-again Christian who is washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and the rapture happens. That's the only way a person will escape death, by rapture. But again, we don't know when that's going to happen. It could happen right now. I could be doing this video, and this video will be playing and playing and playing until somebody comes in and takes the computer. Then I won't see death. But if the Lord tarries, I'm going to die. You're going to die. And all the education, all the medication, all the money is not going to prevent you. You will die. And you are a sinner. I dealt with one guy one time. Oh, I've never sinned. I, I, you know, well, I'll stand over your grave and tell you you're a sinner. So, death happens to fools. Death happens to everybody. Regardless. Psalms 53 verse 1. Psalms 53, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they, and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. Oh, boy, look at that. Verily, verily. We saw that. We saw that in chapter 14, verse 1. In chapter 14, verse 1, we, we saw the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. Now notice what <coughs> chapter 53 says. It says they have done abominable iniquity. You know what your works or salvation is to God? I'm going to twiddle beads. I'm going to have a membership. I'm going to give charity. I'm going to say prayers. I'm going to walk old ladies across the street. I am going to be a good person. God says, Isaiah, uh, uh, Psalms 14, 1, uh, Psalms 53, verse 1. That's iniquity. So when you rely on a works system, 
Or I'm going to sell magazine. I'm going to improve myself in front of my pastor. I'm going to do something for the priest. I'm going to do something that God would not allow me to do for salvation. You are committing acts of iniquity. And the more you do for your religion, the more you become a fool by denying God. So scripture with scripture, you are a fool to think your works are going to save you. When God says scripture with scripture, those works are iniquity. You are actually saying there is no God. Because if you were to say there is a God, you would believe on the one that Thomas said, my Lord, my God. And when you stand as a Jehovah Witness and you deny Jesus Christ and yet go about, oh, we're Jehovah Witnesses. You have said there is no God. You are a fool. And I've had Jehovah Witnesses tell me that Jesus Christ is not God. They are not ashamed to say that. And the Bible says you're a fool. I had Roman Catholic family tell me that the Jesus I preach, he is not the one. Mary, to my face, in my ears, and I would say, you're a fool. It's that plain and simple. When you deny the salvation of Jesus Christ, you are linked. You're not worse than an atheist. You are linked with an atheist. Because you're saying there is no God. By not receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's that simple. Again, repeat of number 14 and number 20. That number 20 was the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. Number 24, the fool has said in his, there's no God. So it's important that God has put it in there twice, a verily, verily. God repeated it. Psalm 69, verse 5. You're going to see a lot of fools that go to Broadway. Sixty-nine, verse five. Go back one page. You're going to find fools that are Christians that are saved, and yet they don't do what God's told them to do: go in all the world and preach the gospel. I let my light shine. That's not what God said. Over there, it says in Matthew, Matthew is not a church age book. And where Jesus said that, Jesus is alive and well. He has not died, according to scriptures. He has not been buried. And he has not risen from the grave, according to the scriptures. After he's dead, after he's been buried, and after he's risen from the grave, he said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. And many Christians don't do that. You're a fool. You're denying what God said, Jesus. Psalm 69.5, aren't we all just fools? And listen, I'm a fool too. You say, well, how's that? Because I don't tell everybody about Jesus I should. I size people up. I have failed to give the word to everybody I've come across. I Paul says, I to the fact that I'm not quoting it correctly, I witness to everybody. I'm clear from all men. I can't say that. So I guess I'm a fool. Because I have not preached the gospel to every creature. I need to repent. Psalm 69, verse 5. O oh God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. How's that? Sins is linked to foolishness. It's right there. It's right there. We have got to acknowledge that our foolishness is sin. There's no other way. And I don't know, you know, when you came across it, oh, look at this, a study of fools. I don't know how you came into the study. Look at, you know, hey, I want my neighbor. Oh, that guy over there, them people over there, my co-workers. I don't know how you went into the study. But I don't know if you came into study and said, well, I want to learn how I'm a fool. And yet, aren't we? Aren't I a fool? 
It's not First John 1, 9, if we confess our sin, is that not written to Christians because we sin? God knows. And we cannot hide anything from God except if we put it under the blood. He knows when we've been good. He knows when we have bad. He's making a list. He don't need to check it twice. That's not about Santa Claus. That's about God. And there are times in our lives, brethren, we are the fool. We are doing foolishness. And if we want to please God, we got to put that under the blood of Jesus Christ and we got to grow out of that foolishness. We got to seek the wisdom of God on how not to be foolish. Because the opposite of foolish is wisdom. Foolishness will stand for the Christian as wood, hay, and stubble one day. 